going on there guys Dr. to feel hot and it's that time of year again where people start asking themselves questions and think about what's next for this game in this series and since I'm an NHLer and NHL is one of my favorite games I'm thinking about what's next in the NHL series and we know for sure that NHL 16 is coming uh, there's really nothing stopping EA Sports from making another NHL game and they pretty much confirmed it every single year and for a mock release date it's usually the first Tuesday of September uh, if I can go check my calendar right now uh, if I can go check it out right now I'm going to where is it okay September it's I'm okay well second Tuesday this month but uh, it's gonna be probably September 8th 2015 that's probably when NHL 16 is gonna come out so for this video I'll be giving you my thoughts and ideas on NHL 16 I've done this video for the past couple of years now ever since NHL 13 so if you've seen my previous videos you know how this already works I'll be splitting up to three categories or three parts one's gonna be the cover then it's gonna be the gameplay and then it's gonna be game modes to add slash fix so let's start off with the cover. Uh, for the past couple of years, eSports have done a cover vote, so ever since NHL 13. And at first I thought it was a good idea, but as time like as times come, it just became really, really stupid. Because at first you could choose any players, but if you look at the bottom of the cover vote page, it says eSports still has the decision at the end of the vote. So say the fans vote for this guy, but eSports doesn't like that guy, they can choose the other guy just because they can. So I say for the cover this year, just go back to your normal way of doing the cover. So ever since NHL 12 and further back, say nothing to no one until the NHL awards and then at the NHL awards, announce the guy that's going to be on your cover. And for the guy to be on the cover, it's the guy that did well this year, that, did, uh, that impressed a lot of people. So potential candidate, maybe Philip Forsberg. That's who I think should deserve the cover this year. This year. So let's get on with the gameplay. Uh, Esports this year, for NHL 15, they take a they took a huge step and reinnovated the NHL series with this next gen gameplay, and they pretty much they did a good job at it. But there's still some flaws at a lot of places. Let's start off with the poke checking. Uh, the poke checking isn't, uh, there's really nothing much to say about it. If you've played NHL 15 next gen, you know what it is. And it's a huge problem. I could be poke checking this guy and slashing this guy's stick over and over again. And for some reason, the puck doesn't come off his stick. And then when I do get off the, when I do get the puck off his stick, he still finds a way to get it even though he's way out of reach of getting that puck. So poke checking, it's got to be more realistic. And when I poke check the puck, and when I when my stick is on the other guy's puck, it's got to get loose or just it's got to get un uncontrollable. Just like real life hockey. Next is the checking. The checking, they've almost got it right this year. I can, I can't, I can almost say it's perfect, but it's just not there just yet. There's still some stuff here and there where I can take a guy like San Luis and go check a guy like Chera. Even though San Luis is five foot eight and the chair is six foot nine, uh, you could say just maybe that he's got a random boost, but it's just San Luis checking Chara is just it's you don't really see that happening. But there's just in other occasions where I can take small guys and check bigger guys, and you could arguably could say the balance is an effect. But I say the checking's got to be a little bit more realistic. But for some, because some cases the checking. I can make a big check and it just it's not even a big check so just just uh i would say not nerf it but just bring it down one more notch like just a little notch but just bring it down one more notch and next thing is the passing the passing it's been a problem since nhl 14 for me and for some reason it's just i don't know if it's my sense of directions or whatever but if i pass through a guy across the ice and it's going, I'm aiming straight to him. For some reason, the puck goes the other way. And I don't know why this happens to me because I am, and it's clearly going to him, but it just goes the other side of the ice when I let go of that RT or the right trigger. And for some 
odd reasons, there's some games people can pass crisp pass, and then when I try to do that, it just goes berserk. So the passing is gotta be fixed for NHL 16. I don't know what the problem is, but when I try to aim, it just it goes berserk. So next thing is something to add to the NHL series, and that's what I like. I don't really what to call it, but I like to call it sort of like a in-game boost. They've tried to do this in the past. Uh, it's not really sort of they sort of fail a little bit, but um, when I'm talking about an in-game boost, I don't mean like when you're playing NHL 2005 and you're pressing that right tr or that uh, that right trigger and you get a a boost on your player. I'm talking about if a player is hot during the game, he gets an in-game boost. I'll say a guy like Tyler Johnson, he gets two goals in a game and it's going it's going in the third period and he wants to get that hat trick. Since he's hot and he has all this confident boost and whatever, he gets an in-game boost. So that means a couple of his stats, his stats upgrade a little bit just to give him that confidence to get that hat trick. And it can go for other occasions like a goaltender. If a goaltender is having a hot game, and he's he's on fire. He's stopping 20 shots in the first period. And his team is sucking, but he's keeping them in. Give him that extra boost to give him more confidence. It's pretty much like real life hockey. If somebody's hot during the game and he's having the uh, the one of his best games of his life, upgrade his stats a little bit so he can have that boost so he can be better than other players. Not like extremely better, but just better so he can perform better because he's having hot a hot game and he's he has all the confidence in the world. I think it'd be pretty cool because, like like I said, if a guy's on a two goal game and he wants to get that Hattie, he's got confidence and he can just he can get that Hattie because he gets a couple of boosts here and there. So I say it's a good idea integrating the game. Uh, but I don't know, I said that that's just me. I thought it'd be I think it'd be better because it's just it'll be more like real life hockey. And a good example of this is like um, Alex Hammond from the Ottawa Senators, a goaltender that came out of nowhere and now he's got five wins in his past five games. So you know <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty good. And now let's go on to the game modes to add slash fix. Okay, first and foremost. Look at NHL 14, look at NHL 15. What's missing more than half the game modes? Pretty much take NHL 14, all the game modes that are missing, put them in NHL 16. That's what you should do first. And now to fix and add some game modes. GM mode. GM mode, one of the best offline game modes in my opinion, but pretty much in other people's opinion also. So GM mode. Uh, like I said for the when I the first thing I said, look at NHL 14, look at NHL 15 GM mode. Basically, what NHL 15 GM mode is is basically they finish NHL 15 and they were like, oh shit, we forgot NHL the the GM mode. So they were like, quick things, let's just do the GM mode, and they they released it a month later, the of the release date. Before NHL 16, make it like NHL 14 GM mode. Because the flow in NHL 14 GM mode is good and it's quick, it has an easy flow and I can do stuff as quick as possible. As opposed to NHL 15 where it lags and it's just, it's slow. Especially the simming. The simming, I, a season mode, like when I want to sim a season NHL 15 for GM mode, it takes so long as opposed to NHL 14 where it would just be quick. Even for doing the lines, in HL 14, for doing the lines, it's quick, quick, quick. I can switch players here and there, and this, I would be done right away. As opposed to NHL 15, where it would lag and it would just be slow. And sometimes when I would switch a position, it would just switch the other position instead. If you watch my gym mode, you understand what I'm going through. And also, what's one thing that's good about the NHL 15 gym mode is... The draft. The draft is being renovated a little bit, which it's so, sort of a little bit more realistic, like the NHL draft, the real NHL draft. But I want what I want to see is predictions. Like I want, like there is predictions, but I want to see like the TSN prediction. If you've seen the NHL draft, you see what TSN does and everything. I want to see this guy's stats from last season and when he played in the minors, like the OHL, QMJHL, like when he played his last season. 
And I want to see predictions, like what they rate, what uh, TSN rates this guy out of. I know there's scouts to do that, but I want to see another person's opinion, other than my scout. And I can see like a skating, is it 4 out of 5, is it like 3 out of 4, or I mean 3 out of 5, like just stuff like that. And I can see his stats and where he's going to go in the draft and his predictions. Another thing for GM mode, I want to see is if a player is doing, doesn't like being on my team and he doesn't, and he wants to get traded, I want to see a message popping up on my phone saying that, okay, this player doesn't like the team, he wants to get traded. And then I can consider it for the future saying that, okay, I can trade this player in the future because he doesn't like being on the team. Just stuff, little things like that, that make GM mode better. And also animation would be cool for doing the draft, but, um, you know, that's just, that's just my opinion. It's, it's, uh, eSports, so, ah, we'll see about that. Yeah, so that's just some stuff here and there for GM mode. Okay, next we go on with live the life slash be a pro. Like Johnny Suburban describes it. In NHL 15, be a pro more like be a joke. The be a pro in NHL 15 is just a complete joke. It's not what be a pro is. It's that's what it was in NHL 09, but that was a brand new game mode that they created. So for NHL 16, I want live life, but I want more. More in meaning that look at the NBA 2K series and now do that. That's what you got to do for live life. Take the NBA 2K series, my player, more my career. Put it in Live the Life. Not, well, it's not really a copy, but, you know, make it NHL style instead of basketball style. That's what Live the Life should be. I want to see animations. I want to see, like, cutscenes. I want to see, like, like everything that is in the NBA 2K series, my career, my, I don't know what it's called, but I don't play the NBA 2K, 2K series. But everything that's in that, it's got to be in Live the Life, but NHL style. So next is some game modes to add, and um, I know they said that they said this game mode in um, in a survey that I did a video on. You can check that out, and that is being owner mode. Being owner mode is basically you own a team. I think they have it in the 2K series also, uh, the NBA 2K series, but I'm not too too sure about that. So basically, what I want to see for the owner mode is you're owning a team. So I want to see like. You can edit ticket prices, you can edit the concession stands, you can basically edit everything that has to be for making money. And to start off this, it's either you choose to be an owner of a team that's already in the NHL, or to be an expansion. Like to, uh, to be a team in expansion. Cough, Las Vegas. So if you want a team to be like an expansion, you would do an expansion draft. So if you don't know what that is, I talk it in my NHL Las Vegas video. You can pretty much see what it is, an expansion draft and all that. But it's either you go on a regular team that's already in the NHL, or you create your team, and you start off as expansion draft, and then you can go on from there. Like I said, ticket prices, concession stand, and if my arena's old, and it's falling apart, and I can see people, they're, they're just not into it in my arena, I can update it. And it's all about making money as being owner. I know that's not... Uh, I know you don't want to hear that, but that's what it is, man. That's why Las Vegas is probably going to get a team other than Quebec City because it's a money town other than Quebec City, which I would love to see a team there, but they just can't make money there. It's That's the hard truth. I'd rather see a Canadian team than having a team Las Vegas where it's not a hockey town. That's just my opinion, so I'm getting off topic. But, uh, like, be an owner... I want to see everything that has to be with owner, like creating jerseys, all that stuff. If I want to change my jersey, I'm an owner, I can do that. Like all that stuff and be an owner. And now let's go on with just a couple of, uh, not really game modes, but just stuff that they should bring back. Um, the creation zone, creation zone, obviously bring it back, but renovate it. Put more faces, put more hair, put more, just put more stuff to create your character. Same thing with the create a team, bring that back, but put more jer put more style of jersey, put more socks, you know what I mean. Just completely gut it out and re like renovate it. ESHL, ESHL, or ESHL. Uh, that game mode, obviously it's been taken out, well, yeah, it's been taken out of NHL 15. But uh, bring it back, but uh, add a little spark to it. I don't know, I don't really play ESHL, but people that have played it, 
they've given some good opinions or good ideas on it. So I'll just bring it back, but add a little spark to it. And last but not least is a game mode that I've wanted for a long time. It's not, I know it's sort of died out during the, throughout the years, but it's the NHL skills competition. Make it as game mode, put it in season mode, put it in GM mode, all that stuff. And make it also an online game mode. For, for the online game mode, I say basically, it's like uh, ESHL. As you play an event or whatever, you earn XP. And as you earn XP, you can upgrade your player, like in ESHL or um, online team play. So say your guy has a good shot, he'll be good in the hardest shot competition. Say if your guy's fast, he'll have he'll be good in the fastest skater competition. But there's other things to it. So it can't just be speed is your factor because you, you want to be good in speed. Uh, you want to be in the good in the fastest skater competition. It's other factor also, so such as balance and all that. The guy could have both same speed, but if you look at subcategories like balance, agility, and all that, depends who's better. So as you play some um, some events, you would gain more XP, and if when you gain more XP, you can upgrade your guy, and he'll be one of the greatest skills competitions ever. That's just something to consider. I've said it in the past couple of years, but uh, they don't they don't take it too serious. So that's about it for my thoughts and ideas on NHL 16. If you guys have any thoughts and ideas, leave it in the comments below. I love hearing people's opinions and love hearing ideas. And so hope you guys are subscribed and we'll see you guys next time. And NHL 16, it better be one hell of a game. So, bye-bye.